You might remember Opal Cowboy, the evil pixie from Artemis Fowl book too. And she's kind of bad, and she kind of hates Artemis, and it's kind of on her to-do list to kill everyone that was in her past last time. Hello, fellow book questers! It is I, Aaron, the book quester. Today, I have this awesome epic book, the fourth installment, I'm pretty sure, of the Artemis Fowl series. Artemis Fowl and the Opal Deception by Eon Culver himself. And gosh, this is such a good title. Every single Artemis book, Artemis Fowl book, has such a catchy and perfect title that I know that couldn't have been better. And well, let's get right on to it. As usual, this is about Artemis Fowl, the child prodigy, but this time Artemis has no memory of Haldi Short, of the people, of fighting trolls and Opal Cowboy, and rescuing his father with fairy technology, making the seed cube the the hybrid human fairy technology. He has no memory of anything that happened in the past three bucks, and it kinda sucks. But Opal Cowboy is back. And she's kinda genius about it. You see, she had this really backup plan that she had a little bit of fun going on for her in like a hospital, and she pretended to be in a coma for almost almost a year, and she then was replaced by a clone. By a clone of herself, of course this is illegal, but Opal Cowboy at this point doesn't care about illegal. And she proceeds with her master plan. And she is gonna have revenge. First of all, kill Julius Root. She easily does this by first killing the goblin that got in her way, then putting basically killing him at least, and putting him where Julius Root and Holly Short would come. And Holly Short and Julius Root did come, but Julius Root was killed by the trap set by Opal Cowboy, and from the security footage, it looked like Holly Short had shot a gun at Julius Root, which is, holy crap, that is bad. And Foley, our faithful centaur, does not believe this for a moment. But, well, it's kind of, it's not, it's not good. It's, it's not very good. And the situation is not going good. And she had heard while Julius Root was dying that, that Opal Cowboy was going for Artemis Fowl next. Which is a bad news because she, in her heart, knew of Artemis Fowl as a friend. So she puts on her ring wings and goes flying straight to find Artemis Fowl. Of course, she is a step late, but Butler, our dear old bodyguard, isn't. When he sees the bionic biobomb, I'm pretty sure what that it's called, a missile coming for Artemis, he grabs Artemis, grabs a mattress, throws it, jumps off a three-story building. Of course, Artemis is hurt, her, his ribs break, but Holly Short arrives in just a nick of time, heals him up, and tries to explain what had happened for the past two years and how they have become friends. And Artemis, who has no memory of this, said that he was his consultant now and that, that Holly Short had to give him one metric ton of gold for his services, which is ridiculous. The old Artemis would have never done something like that to Holly Short, his dearest friend, but. It wasn't Artemis right now. He it was a very brainwashed donkey person of an Artemis. So yeah, that's that's what's going on. And it's really really not good because we need Artemis's full capabilities and one of those capabilities will be knowing about Opal Cowboy. But alas, Opal Cowboy captures Artemis and our dear Holly Short. And they are marooned in a place where trolls roam free. Meanwhile, Butler is at Foul Manor, and he comes and he sees this person. No, some sort of dwarf human? And he's none other than our dear Mulch Dickens. And in the last book, Artemis Fall, when his memory was getting erased, gave Mulch Dickens a chip. 
a chip that had everything about the fairies in it, and a video explaining the entire situation to, well, his future self, basically. And he and so Mulchigums had the little disc thing, and he was gonna give that to Artemis. But obviously Artemis wasn't here because he had been kidnapped, and he's now marooned an arm with an army of trolls, so that's not good. And Mulch shows the disc to Archie Butler, and there's a private message from the past Artemis to Butler. And he says one word that makes Butler believe him, and the memory blocks are erased. I'm not gonna say what word it is, because you should figure it out by now. The end. And, well, yeah. And it's really just really super, super interesting. And then Mulch, Diggums, and Butler remembers each other, and as friends and comrades, and together they go off to save Artemis Fowl and Holly Short. After they manage to save them from an army of tro angry trolls, they go together and they formulate a plan. A plan to defeat Opal Kavon. And if you know Artemis Fowl, his plans are more than majestic. His plans has backup plans, and those backup plans has backup plans. There are loopholes, things that their enemies think they have foiled, but is actually just playing along to Artemis's fingers. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. And I can't believe that this Ewan Colfer actually just makes these genius plans that Artemis is making in the book, and it just makes me think that the author is just as smart as Artemis Fowl by maybe a couple hundred IQ because Artemis is really, really smart, but but Ewan Colfer is a master at making this plot. It is absolutely epic, and like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. It is an awesome book, a must read, as I always say for the Ar Artemis Fowl books. It is futuristic and yet has magic. It has magic, yet as futuristic with laser guns and all those missiles. And, uh, holy short, Mulch Diggins, Butler, and Artemis Fowl are at it again.